Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden and it's very much Operation Tidy because we've had the first frost and that means things like these tender nasturtiums are very much at the end and I'm getting ready for next season. Now for the last year I've been experimenting with something called Noble's Gardening or intuitive gardening and it's been a really fascinating year and I've learned lots so I thought in this video I'd do kind of a review of the previous growing season that we're just finishing off right this moment and kind of tell you what I've learned and based off this what I would recommend if you're interested in intuitive gardening. So I'm going to start with the most surprising lesson that I learnt and this is a very personal one. Now I've always kind of shunned the idea of growing flowers unless they were edible but this year I thought I'd push myself and get a bit out of my comfort zone and I grew loads of cosmos this year all around the garden and I really enjoyed it. It brought loads of colour and I was kind of amazed how easy and simple it is. And from this, I'm definitely going to utilise growing a lot more flowers in and around the garden uh, in future years and kind of take on a little bit more of the potager style of growing. The second lesson I learned was the importance of polyculture planting and the growing importance of that because obviously with no rules gardening I could try growing things in ways that I wouldn't usually do for example rows of beetroot and instead just grow them dotted around the garden and I learned a key lesson by accident doing this because unfortunately the beetroot rows in front of me have been hit by voles and they've destroyed every single beetroot that was left. We did manage to harvest quite a bit, but it's really sad to see. However, where I have planted beetroot kind of as an experiment where I have a hybrid bed of annuals and perennial crops, those beetroot there haven't been touched because there's lots of different crops around them. It's a perfect polyculture and they're vol damage free and the lesson that I've learned from that is to really not try and put all of my eggs in one basket not to grow one block of crops and instead try and space it around the garden so even if one gets hit by a pest the other ones theoretically should be fine. Here I'm just uh, removing this structure here is district nurse which is a heritage climbing bean and last night just before the frost we got the last harvest of all of these beans for shelling and cooking which is really exciting and the third lesson that I learnt from a year of intuitive gardening is that it's really improved my observation skills because I didn't have a plan to follow which forced me to look a lot more carefully at the growing space and then I used the observations to inform what I'd grow there or how I could best utilize that and I really enjoyed it and a year of this uh, has given me loads of ideas to start using in the next growing season and I think the one that I'm most excited about is being able to utilise a lot more wigwams around the garden, not just to add some structure, but also a lot of visual interest. The danger of having a year of intuitive gardening and no rules growing and not having a plan is that there's a likelihood that you'll come across some big challenges and potential failures during the season, which is something I've definitely experienced. One that really stands out for me was that it's quite easy to run out of space uh, when you're just going for it. And for me, I was trying to garden in an intuitive way without following a plan. And what ended up happening was in July, 
there was a period of around three weeks where the garden was completely full, completely chock-a-block with things. And I'd, I was getting really creative in terms of where to put out seedlings. But I had loads of seedlings uh, that were just in the solar tunnel waiting to go out. And when you're at that stage of the year, time is really of the essence because literally a, a matter of uh, a week or days in between planting something can mean you having a harvest at the end of the season or not ha having a harvest. And I feel that had I transplanted these two to three weeks before I actually did, when they were actually meant to go out, I might have able to have had a, a crop, even if it was a small crop, it could have done a few meals. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And that's going to be a key thing that I need to bear in mind as I'm approaching July. It's also just make sure that I do have some space available uh, for succession crops right at the end of the season. Just before I go into the next lesson, this video backs up and supports the article that I wrote in the most recent edition of the Permaculture magazine. And I really try to go in depth and in detail into the approach of intuitive gardening. So if you want to find out more about the Permaculture magazine and see all of the inspiring projects that it shares from around the world, there'll be a link down below in the description. One of the main things that I wanted to do when it comes to no rules gardening was to not use a planting plan because one of the main reasons why we have a planting plan is to make sure that we're following crop rotation. I know there are other benefits of planting plans as well, but the main reason why I didn't want to do one was A, to not worry about crop rotation, uh, going against the common kind of norms, um, and also to just have a little bit more space for intuitive growing. And a huge part of that, a real benefit that I found, was I opened up a huge degree of flexibility. And it meant that I could make last minute decisions, um, kind of influenced actually by my observations and being able to be flexible and actually think, no, I think the carrot should go over here um, rather than the original spot that I had thought of means that you're far more able to adapt because there might be some kind of pest issue in a certain area of your garden. And then by just having that freedom, it doesn't have a knock-on impact on your planting plan because you don't have a planting plan. Now a really exciting lesson for me this year was learning that I can actually fit more plants in the same space. Now usually I would have just thought, no, this bed is just for the beans and the kale. But because I was trying, mainly because of more observation, I was trying to be a little bit more clever and not worry about crop rotation. Um, I would just put in other plants as and when, and uh, this turnip is probably a little bit woody, uh, but I just put that in and we had a great row of turnips here, uh, which usually I wouldn't have thought to do. Now, one of the favourite, my favourite successes actually, um, was seeing that there was some space after I had planted uh, these runner beans, a space in between. And I decided uh, to grow uh, some parsley and the parsley has absolutely loved it here. I've been harvesting loads and it's enjoyed the shade as well. And that was just purely out of the fact of, oh, I'll try something new. You wouldn't usually grow parsley and beans together, but let's give it a go. And that has been awesome. And it actually links in with another lesson, which has been that the joy of experimentation is just absolutely uh, incredible. It's undeniable in a way. And for me, based on the amount of experimentation I've done this season in the garden, I'm going to make sure that every single year I'm going to leave some space in the garden to allow myself to just continue doing more experimentation. And I think that links perfectly with intuitive gardening and no rules because you see what could happen and then you could adapt that 
uh, to influence you trying out completely new different planting methods and it's so exciting. I'm just here beginning to remove these tomato plants and uh, they're a real sign of summer. And one thing I definitely found was that I kind of got distracted when it came to spring and summer because you've got all the energy, all of the planting, thinking about the summer crops. And what happened was that it kind of distracted me a bit from away from winter vegetables. And as a result, this uh, coming winter, my winter veg game isn't as strong uh, because it's really easy uh, to forget about winter vegetables, but the tricky thing about them is often they take the longest to mature. So you've really got to start them in March, April and May to reach a full effect. And by June, July, I was beginning to think to myself, ah, um, have I caught myself out here? And by then it's often too late uh, to think about the hardy winter vegetables. The ninth lesson that is really embedded the way that I kind of approach or think about gardening is more of a mindset and it's become really apparent this growing season because before I used to only think about how much food I could grow uh, from the garden, how productive I could make the garden. But for me now, productivity also includes the output or the yield of happiness and positivity and almost an escapism because from a garden you're not just producing food you're not just creating habitat for nature and insects and all sorts of things you're also improving that mental health aspect for yourself as a gardener and it's also a chance just to go out do something new just be in nature and not have to worry about what's been going on and by being able to not worry about rules um, and just almost playing it um, by feel when I've been growing, that has really opened up uh, the whole enjoyment side of it. And that's a really important takeaway that I wasn't expecting to get when I first started this growing season. The real question is, will I do another growing season using this method of no rules gardening coupled with intuitive growing? The short answer is no. And the reason why is because I see positives in all types of gardening. I see positives in having kind of that strict plan where you can really make sure that you've got the succession planning down to a T. But I also see the positives in having open spaces to be creative and flexible and expressive through the season. So I'm going to follow a hybrid style from now on. Part of the garden is going to be well planned, the other part of the garden is going to be open and free for interpretation throughout the season. And I think uh, the final paragraph of my article in the Permaculture magazine probably sums this up because we all are individual and will have our own needs and interests when it comes to how to approach gardening. So there is no real right or wrong when it comes to growing food. Granted there are a few rules that nature follows but everything else is up to us gardeners to do as we please. Use the methods you enjoy, grow what you love and always have time to experiment. That's a mantra I have settled with this year and I won't be looking back. <laughs>